Would you recognize your best childhood friend after 20 years of being apart? Sometimes one of the most difficult lessons for us to learn as we get older is that people including ourselves change. Although we might be able to recognize the physical features of people we once knew, some of their other qualities could very well be altered beyond recognition, especially after 20 years. In this video, you are going to explore the complicated and surprising feelings and situations that such a reunion can bring, analyzing the themes in O. Henry's After 20 Years. Before we explore and experience, let's know about the author. William Sidney Porter was born on September 11, 1862 in Greensboro, North Carolina. His parents were Arjunan Sidney Porter, a physician, and Mary Jane Virginia Swim Porter. When William was three, his mother died after giving birth to her third child and he and his father moved into the home of his paternal grandmother. As a child, Porter was always reading everything from classics to dime novels. His favorite works were Lane's translation of One Thousand and One Nights and Burden's Anatomy of Melancholy. O. Henry is a popular American short story writer. His works romanticized the life of ordinary people in New York City. His stories are well known throughout the world. They express the effect of coincidence on character and often had unexpected twists in the end. His stories are also noted for their witticism and clever wordplay. O. Henry's prolific writing period began in 1902 in New York City, where he wrote 381 short stories. He wrote one story a week for the New York World Sunday magazine for over a year. A few of his other popular short stories are The Gift of the Magi, The Cop and the Anthem, The Ransom of Red Chief, A Retrieved Reformation and The Third Ingredient. O. Henry's short story After 20 Years was first published in the Sunday edition of the New York World in 1905. The story was included in the 1906 anthology The Four Million and it has since been republished in many short story collections. The prescribed supplementary reader After 20 Years by O. Henry delineates the duty consciousness of a true policeman who is torn between love for his friend and his professional loyalty. Let's move on to know what happens after 20 years. After 20 Years is a short story written by O. Henry, published in 1906. The story begins with a beat cop walking down a New York City street on a rainy, windy night. The cop projects a sense of strength and rectitude and takes his rounds very seriously, trying all the doors of the shops as he passes them to ensure that they are locked and secured for the evening. When he sees a man standing near one of the closed stores, he approaches and the man begins to explain his presence, telling him that he is waiting for an old friend. Twenty years ago, he and his friend made a pact to meet at that site. He acknowledges that it's a pretty odd place to meet, explaining that twenty years ago it was a restaurant owned by a man named Big Joe Brady. The cop tells him that the restaurant closed down about five years before. The man, who is wearing a very large jewel as a tie pin, goes on to tell the cop that 20 years ago he met his friend Jimmy Wells there. They were best friends and had grown up in New York City. He describes them as almost like brothers. The day after their dinner, the man was scheduled to begin a trip out west to seek his fortune. But Jimmy believed the best place for him to be was New York and opted to stay behind. They then made their agreement to meet on the same spot in 20 years because they were each confident of having achieved great things in that time. The cop finds himself interested in the story and asks if they stayed in touch during that time. The man admits that they tried to and wrote each other for a little while 
but stopped after a few years. He moved around too much to keep up a correspondence. Despite this gap in their communication, the man is confident that Jimmy will meet him as promised because Jimmy was an extremely reliable person. He tells the cop that he traveled a very long way to be there but will consider it worth if he gets to see his friend again. He checks the time on an expensive watch and notes that it is 3 minutes to 10 and 10 o'clock was when they said goodbye 20 years ago. The cop noting the jewel and the watch suggests that the man was very successful out west and the man enthusiastically confirms this. He expresses hope that Jimmy has done just as well for himself but he notes that Jimmy was a slow mover and is worried he may not have made this way very far in New York City. The cop makes to leave and offers his hope that Jimmy shows up. He asks if the man will leave if Jimmy does not make it by 10 o'clock. The man says he will wait at least an additional half an hour because he has total faith that if Jimmy is alive he will make the appointment. The cop accepts this and leaves. The rain gets heavier and the man waits. After about 20 minutes a tall man appears wearing a long coat and hurries over. He asks if the man's name is Bob but sounds doubtful. The man says it is and asks if it is Jimmy Wells. He said he is and they shake their hands. Jimmy expresses a wish that the old restaurant was still there so they could have one more dinner in it and then asks if Bob's time out west was good to him. Bob assures him that it has been. Bob then notes that Jimmy seems to be taller than he used to be and Jimmy assures him that he grew a little after he left. Bob asks if Jimmy is doing well and Jimmy says he is and that he works for the city. Jimmy suggests they go to a place he knows so they can talk. Bob and Jimmy begin to walk arm in arm. Bob tells Jimmy the story of his life and Jimmy listens obviously interested. When they reach a corner and stand under the street light, however, Bob pulls away and declares that the other man is not Jimmy Wells. The tall man tells Bob that he has in fact been under arrest since the tall man arrived. He tells Bob that the Chicago police contacted the New York cops and told them to watch out for him. He asks if Bob will come quietly and when Bob indicates he will he hands him a note from a policeman named Wells the note tells him that Jimmy came to their meeting and did not wish to arrest him himself and so sent another officer to do it from this lesson we learn three valuable morals one is that the past always catches up to you bob lives a life of crime and he thinks all his hustling around will never catch up to him he is in the wrong place at the wrong time so he is arrested for keeping his appointment with jimmy bob pays for his crimes o henry seems to be cautious against doing bad things as they will always catch up in the end the second lesson we learn is not to underestimate anyone bob brags about his success and hopes jimmy has done half as well He was kind of a plodder though good fellow as he was. Bob is saying that the Jimmy he knew was unambitious yet he was a good person. He believes that his friend will keep the appointment because Jimmy is reliable and he always was the truest stanchest old chap in the world. So while Bob trusts Jimmy will come he does not think Jimmy will have been successful in his life. He certainly never guesses that Jimmy has become a police officer who will have him arrested. The truth is, if Jimmy is so true and such a good person, the only thing he can do is turn in his old friend. Bob does not seem to know Jimmy so well. Another valuable moral here is that doing the right thing must take precedence over everything else. The two friends keep their 20-year appointment that should say something about the value of friendship however once jimmy recognizes that his old friend is a wanted criminal he must make a choice 
he writes to bob somehow i could not do it myself because he feels guilty for betraying his old friend it is an understandable feeling but jimmy knows the right thing to do is to arrest bob so he places the law before a friendship